What time is it right now on God's prophetic alarm clock? I'm going to tell you because I believe there are seven alarms that are going off in the spirit right now, ringing quite loudly that let you know what time it is and how to get ready for the great outpouring of God's glory that is consuming the planet. Get ready. Welcome to The Resting Place, a place where you will experience the supernatural presence and power of God both in and upon you where you will meet face to face with the Holy Spirit in a tangible way, and where you will encounter signs, wonders, and miracles. Join Larry Sparks, prophetic teacher, lecturer on revival, and publisher for Destiny Image today, as together we enter into The Resting Place. Welcome to The Resting Place. I'm your host, Larry Sparks, and on this program, we teach you how to create a resting place for the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. Because here's the deal. If you are a believer in Jesus Messiah, the Holy Spirit lives inside of you, but I've got good news. There's more. Listen, I'm forever grateful that He lives inside of me because that's confirmation that I'm born again. It's confirmation I'm going to heaven. It's confirmation that God is with me and He'll never leave me. He'll never forsake me. He'll never leave you. But I know there's more. I know that the Holy Spirit who lives inside of me can rest upon me. And my encouragement to you is contend and cry out, there is so much more than we're currently walking in. And I want to talk to you today about seven alarm clocks that are going off in the Spirit. I believe they let us know where we are on God's prophetic time clock, and they let us know that we are in an urgent hour. Now, when I talk about God's prophetic time clock or timelines, I'm not necessarily talking about apocalyptic doom, things ready to blow up, and the earth exploding like the Death Star on Star Wars. I'm not, I'm not talking about that kind of thing. I, I do believe we are getting into a time of darkness. There's obviously darkness, crisis, and chaos in the earth. We're seeing that, and one of the worst things we could do is hide our head in the ground and pretend that all away, thinking everything's just going to come up roses. That, that's not true. But at the same time, we need to have a balanced and sober perspective of where we are. Yes, there is darkness, but there is great glory. And these seven alarm clocks, they let us know that Right now, I believe, is the time for revival, awakening, and the greatest outpouring of the glory of God that we have seen. I was going to say the phrase, since the book of Acts, but I actually believe God wants to exceed and excel what we see in the book of Acts. In fact, it was John Bevere, author, prophetic teacher, John Bevere, who said that the Lord had spoken to him and said, what's coming in the days ahead will make the book of Acts look like child's play. Well, Larry, that doesn't sound biblical. It's 100% biblical because you know what Jesus said? He said, the works that he had done, we will do, but even greater. And when we open up that realm of even greater works, so there are seven prophetic alarms or seven testimonies that let us know where we are right now. The first one is the testimony of Scripture. The Bible actually tells us what time it is. I'm going to give you two Scriptures. Acts 2 Verse 17, it actually says, it shall come to pass in the last days, says God. And I want to encourage you, when it comes to the last days or the end times, there are a lot of healthy conversations, debates and discussions we can have about specific things that will unfold. I think that's healthy. I think that's great. But I don't want to build my life on something that I don't have clarity on. I don't want to build my life on a topic of debate or discussion. I want to build my life on what the Bible gives me clarity on. And I want to encourage you, there are healthy discussions we can have about the end times. There are healthy videos and audios and things we can listen to. But when it comes to building our lives on something, build your life on what God says. And it says here in Acts 2, 17, the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, all flesh. That is God's objective in the last days, that all flesh would experience the outpouring of the spirit. But what's interesting here is it tells me what time it is. It says in the last days, we have been living in the last days since Jesus left the planet, since he died, rose again, and, then he, and he ascended to heaven. We have been living in the last days since the day of Pentecost. This whole period of time, theologically, is the last day. So I want to ask you this question. What do you do in the last days? What is the posture that we need to take in the last days? 
Furthermore, when there is the outpouring of the Spirit happening, because I believe the outpouring of the Holy Spirit started on the day of Pentecost. But for 2,000 years since the day of Pentecost, I believe we have been in a time of rain, in a time of outpouring. Zechariah 10 verse 1, prophet of the Old Testament, he actually tells us what to do. We see instruction here. What do we do in a time of outpouring? Because so many people would actually agree with the fact that, okay, based on what the Bible says, we're living in the last days, we're living in the days of Pentecost, we're living where the availability of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit is there. But why is it that some of us are talking about how available and accessible it is, but we're not walking in the experience of it? I can tell you, and there's one word that I believe bridges the gap, bridges the gulf between a theological understanding of something and an actual experience. And we see it here in Zechariah 10, verse 1. It's the first word. It says this, ask, ask the Lord for rain in the time of the latter rain. I want to encourage you, based on what Scripture t says, I am convinced we are living in the days of outpouring. We've been in the days of outpouring for 2,000 years. What do we do in a time of rain or Holy Spirit outpouring? We ask. We ask. We say, Lord, I understand it's available, but I'm not content. Oh, please hear me. I am not content with a the theological availability. I want to access what the blood of Jesus has made available. That's number one, the testimony of Scripture. It tells us what time it is. Number two is the testimony of dreams and visions. Acts 2.17 continued. We read that in the last days he'll pour out his spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall dream, see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. Dreams and visions, I believe, are the language of the last days. The frequency with which people are experiencing, I believe, legitimate God-given visions and dreams that's confirmation that an alarm clock is going off in the spirit because so many of these dreams and visions actually confirm one another. These people don't know each other. They are not sleeping, waking up and comparing notes. These are all receiving from the same Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is saying it's time for revival. It's time for awakening. And the amazing thing is this. Even some of the phraseology that some of these people is using, it's, it's very similar. Gina Golston, in, in Tim Sheets' book, Angel Armies on Assignment, he recounts the dream that Gina had where she basically says that there is a geyser going off right now in the Holy Spirit, just like Old Faithful, set to the rhythm of heaven's time clock. And I love it. She says, and it, and it, said, it is set on the rhythm of heaven's time clock and it's time. It's time. It's time for that revival. It's time for that awakening. But interestingly enough, that's one dream. On the other side of the planet in Australia, a, a, a prophetess named Lana Vosser has this prophetic dream. She says, while I was in the USA, the Lord spoke to me about a visitation of revival, a revival angel that is being released across the earth that is marking the season we are in. We're in a season of revival and it is beginning to build and sweep across the earth. There were many, many other angels who were accompanying this angel of revival. Listen to this. And they all had clocks in their hands. When I looked at the clocks, all of them were at the same time, midnight. And as they came into the lives of believers, all the angels sang in one accord. Guess what they said? It's time. It's time. It's time. It's time for the great revive. I want to encourage you. These alarm clocks are going off in the spirit. Dreams and visions with people across the earth from one another are having the same encounters. And I encourage you, get ready because God is gearing up for the greatest glory outpouring we've ever seen. We'll be right back in a minute. Larry Sparks is a prophetic teacher, lecturer on revival, and publisher for Destiny Image. He travels worldwide, equipping everyday believers to encounter the presence of the Holy Spirit in their everyday lives, translating God's supernatural power to the spheres of influence they have been called to. Larry is driven by a vision to see the earth filled with God's glory. This will happen only as every person, touched by the power of God, learns how to become a resting place for the Holy Spirit and releases His power, prophetic strategy, and presence into education, government, media, arts and entertainment, business, family, and the church. 
As Larry hosts meetings and seminars, the presence of God moves with great power to renew believers, revive the lost, and send forth reformers to change the world. Check out his website for more information. Welcome back to The Resting Place. I'm your host, Larry Sparks, and we're going through this prophetic teaching about seven alarm clocks that are going off in the Spirit, letting us know what time it is right now. And I believe it is time for a great outpouring of the glory of God. I'll be honest, it's been time for 2,000 years. It's been time since Jesus left the planet. And Jesus actually said, I'm going to go away, but I'm going to send you an advantage. I can't even imagine that because Jesus is basically telling the people before he left the planet, the one I'm going to send to you, the Holy Spirit, is an upgrade, is an advantage, even beyond having Jesus here. Now, stay with me for a moment because obviously all praise, glory, and honor goes to Jesus. Obviously, Holy Spirit exists to bring Jesus the glory. But here's the thing. When Jesus walked the earth, he was in one body. Now, because of his work on the cross, Holy Spirit the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Christ, the Spirit of Jesus can be in a multitude of people. And can you imagine the multiplied impact that will have? So going back into the different alarm clocks going off into the Spirit right now that let us know what time it is. I talked about the alarm clock of dreams and visions. The next one, the third one, is the alarm clock or the testimony of history. History is not a memorial, but it is a motivator and it is a model. It's not a static memorial of what God did back then, either in Bible times, although I don't even like that language because I don't know when we shifted from Bible times into non-Bible times. I, I understand ancient times. I understand periods in history. But the reality is the God of Bible times is the God today. He has not changed since then. So history tells us what God has done, and that God has not changed. He is no respecter of persons, but I can tell you this, he is no respecter of eras in history. The God who moved in the book of Acts, the God who moved on the day of Pentecost, the God who encountered the prophet Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 6, or the God who encountered Moses at the burning bush. You may not have a bush or a tree catch on fire before you, but guess what? The same God who ignited that bush, he's your God. The same God that Isaiah saw and became undone because of that measure of glory and the train of that Lord's robe filled the temple, that encounter. You may not have that same encounter with God, but you have the same God. So I want to encourage you. History tells us who God is, what God's done, and it's not meant to be something that, oh, well, that was great back then. It reminds us that the God who moved will move again. And furthermore, history introduces us to very normal people, normal men, normal women who one day decided, you know what, I'm going to live and conduct my life as if it's time for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit right now. Not tomorrow, not in seven years, not when we, you know, check off this on the list, but a revivalist is made. Somebody who shifts history for God is made, not necessarily because God sovereignly chose them, but they woke up one day and they heard the alarm clock. They heard the alarm clock going off in the spirit and they said, guess what? I need to actually function, act, and think like it's time for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And history introduces us to men and women who were apprehended by that sense of urgency in the spirit. And guess what? Those same alarm clocks are going off now and the same summons, the same invitation that God extended to those men and women of old. The ones that we look at as heroes, the D.L. Moody's, the Charles Finney's, the Jonathan Edwards, William Seymour, uh, all of those people that we have such a high regard for, they were people who simply seized the invitation of time. They recognized now is the time for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And that's what history tells us. The fourth alarm clock is the testimony of darkness and chaos. Now stick with me for a minute because that doesn't sound very happy, but I can assure you, I can assure you it is because the greater level, the crisis and chaos, guess what that means? That means there should be an increasing or superior level of glory released into the earth through the people who carry the glory, which is you and I. 
people who are filled with the Holy Spirit. So when we see darkness, when we see nations shaking, when we see sin becoming rampant and sadly in some places being accepted and celebrated, when we see all of this, obviously we need to take a stand. Obviously we need to preach truth. Obviously our hearts and our spirits will be grieved by it. But I actually want to encourage you when we see darkness like this, it is an alarm clock that lets us know that the God, please hear me, the God who moved in history, the God, this is why it's so vital to know history as well, because when we study revival history or a history of how God has broken in, guess what? Before those revivals or awakenings, they were periods of great moral crisis. They were periods of great darkness. Where we are right now, I understand we have media. I understand we have social media. There are so many different things that are blaring the darkness, blaring immorality at us. I, I get it. I get it. They didn't have that 200 years ago, but the same God who broke in during times of great moral crisis, I believe He is the same God today. And when we study what God has done in the past, that lets us know that where we are right now in this moment in history, as the darkness seems to get darker, I believe we are on the verge or we are on the brink of seeing God break in and break out as He has done in revival history and in a greater measure than ever before. So I encourage you, leverage the darkness. When you see darkness, when you're discouraged and you're overwhelmed by all the stuff you see in the newspaper or social media or on television, just recognize we are right on heaven's time clock and the God who has moved in times of great, again, moral declension and darkness in the past, that God is just ready to break out again. But He is looking for a person. He is looking for somebody to partner with Him and actually agree that now is the time for awakening. Another alarm clock, the fifth one going off right now, is the testimony of spiritualism. Is this infatuation with the supernatural in the spirit world? Because I don't know about you, but you cannot escape it in media, in television, even going to your local bookstore right front and center often. And sadly, our books on witchcraft and the occult, even books on witchcraft for children. It's scary. It's very discouraging. But yet again, you know what it tells me? It tells me that people are interested in the supernatural. And it tells me that as the church, as the people of God, we need to be teaching them about the authentic supernatural. Otherwise, there is, an, there is one who masquerades as an angel of light, as Paul says, the devil who will always be willing to serve up a counterfeit. If we are not giving people the opportunity to experience a supernatural God, then they will seek elsewhere because it's wired inside of them. It is why they were created for an experiential God. They were created to know the living God. David uses language like this. He talks about how his flesh would cry out for the living God in a dry and weary land where there is no water. Well, right now we do live in a dry and weary land. We're talking about the testimony of crisis and the chaos and the darkness around us. But there are a lot of spiritually hungry people. And here is my encouragement to you and my reminder to us as the church, we must teach them about the supernatural. We must introduce them to a God who's real, to a God who, who moves, to a God who is alive because the world is a dry and weary place. There is no water. There is no source of satisfaction. They will be looking for it. They will be groping for it. They will be seeking it. But guess what? Inside of you, Jesus made it very clear out of you and out of your inmost being will flow rivers of living water. We'll be right back to explore the final alarm clocks, letting us know what time it is. Since 1983, Destiny Image has had a clear mandate, publish the prophets. Over the years, the team at Destiny has identified and published some of the most cutting edge and pioneering supernatural books of the generation, launching key leaders into visibility and helping bring the people of God into agreement with heaven's prophetic timeline. Every month, Destiny Image releases powerful new books that help believers understand and walk in the fullness of their prophetic destiny to be supernaturally conformed into the image of Jesus. 
Visit norimediagroup.com to learn about releases from Destiny Image and Harrison House Publishers. And visit destinyimage.tv for thousands of hours of on-demand video training and equipping on how to live a supernatural life. Welcome back to The Resting Place. I'm your host, Larry Sparks, and we are talking about the alarm clocks that are going off right now in the spirit that let us know where we are on God's prophetic time clock. And as I've made very clear, I am thoroughly convinced that we are in the time of Holy Spirit outpouring, but we need to act accordingly. And the things that I'm reviewing, there are just seven. I'm sure there's more, but these things let us know, and they testify of what time it is right now in the Holy Spirit. They testify to what God is doing right now. I was just talking about the fifth one, the testimony of spiritualism, where there is such a hunger, there is such a thirst for the supernatural. And if anybody should be teaching about or demonstrating the authentic supernatural power of God, it should be you, should be me, it should be people filled with the Holy Spirit. Because as mentioned before, the world is a dry and weary land. There is no water. But the same scripture also says, out of your belly, out of your inmost being will flow rivers of living water. The scriptures say in Psalm 46, and I believe there's beautiful prophetic language here, talks about how the earth is shaking, everything is trembling, and yet in the middle of it all, there is a river. There is a river. In the midst of all the crisis, in the midst of all the chaos, there is a river, and I believe that river comes out of you, and it is the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. And when people who don't know Jesus as Messiah come into proximity with living water, when they come into proximity, into nearness with something that is alive, the authentic supernatural, I believe it answers the question that is gnawing at their heart. They may not even have language to articulate, but they are asking, is there a real God? Does God rend the heavens? Does he tear open the heavens? Does he come down? Is he an idea? Is he a figment? Is he like Santa Claus? Is he out there distant and detached or is he real? And I believe when we demonstrate and model the authentic supernatural, we reveal that God is real and he is alive. I have two more that I want to talk about, two more alarm clocks going off in the spirit. And number six is this, the testimony of technology and the rapid spread of information. Even in the book of Daniel, it talks about how uh, people will be running to and fro. I believe in the last days, the latter days, and there'll be an increase of knowledge. Well, where we are right now in this moment in history, technology at now more than any other moment in history affords us, gives us the ability, the, uh, the opportunity to get messages out at an immediate instant rate. If God pours out his spirit, and we're seeing this, we're seeing it even now at wonderful places across the United States, across the world where the Holy Spirit's being poured out, and guess what's happening? It's being captured on video, and I believe that lets people know, wow, God is alive, God is moving in the midst of all the crisis and the chaos, I can go to that place and experience God, or even better yet, I'm going to cry out and ask that spirit, that Holy Spirit, to come and encounter me, just as I see him moving through media, through technology, through, I believe, technology and the rapid spread and availability and the accessibility of information like that, that is a testimony that tells us what time it is in the spirit. Because again, scripture gives us more allegorical language, that's true, when it comes to the end times and the spread of knowledge and even some hints of technology. But I do believe it lets us know it is time for awakening, it's time for revival, and furthermore, as God pours out his spirit and we steward technology in a healthy way, even like we're doing with a show like this, I believe something like that has the ability to broadcast the move of God to the ends of the earth. We have not seen, nor have we even perceived, I believe, of what technology can do to play a role in the coming outpouring of God's glory. Again, he's already pouring out his spirit, but I believe technology is only going to help increase and amplify that as we steward it well. The last testimony, the last alarm clock that's going off, I call it the testimony of burning fires. It was 
uh, Christmas of 2020, around, uh, in December of 2020, I was upstairs uh, wrapping up presents for my daughter and my wife. And you can always tell what presents were wrapped very professionally by my wife and which ones were wrapped by myself very non-professionally. But I was up there wrapping the gifts. And as I was doing that, I felt like the Lord said this to me. He said, tell my people I want to give them a gift. Now, this is December of 2020. People were weary after a year of a global pandemic, of a very unstable society, of all the election, political upheaval. People were very weary. And I'm thinking to myself, God, what gift do you want to give your people? And he said, tell them, I want to give them the gift of a list. And furthermore, I talked to the Holy Spirit and said, Holy Spirit, what does this list look like? And he said, it's the list of places that I'm presently moving and it's only going to increase. And he literally started to highlight to me. I mean, these are places I've gone. These are people I know. He said, tell my people about the outpouring of the spirit that's been sustained for multiple years in North Georgia at the North Georgia revival, where people get baptized in water and they come up out of the waters healed, delivered, and touched by the powerful presence of God, which by the way, that was the normal standard of water baptism in the first 300 to 500 years of church history. People expected to come out of the waters filled with the Holy Ghost, delivered, speaking in tongues, and prophesying. So we see a real return to that book of Acts Christianity. He said, tell my people about what I've been doing in the next generation at a place in Hamilton, Alabama called The Ramp that has been sustaining the fire of revival for 20 years. Kids don't go there for games and pizza parties. They go to The Ramp, which is led by the amazing Karen Wheaton, where they encounter God. They get delivered from deep and dark sin and stronghold, and they give their lives to seeing awakening in this nation. That's been going for 20 years years and it's only intensifying. I felt like the Holy Spirit said, tell them about a place in Peoria, Arizona called Fresh Start Church, where they are literally redigging the well of Pentecostal fire. I know there's different wells of revival. We talk about places where God has moved in the past and we go to those places and honor them and partner with the Holy Spirit. But I felt like the Lord said, there are actually people that he's raising up right now that will redig whole wells of denominations. He's raising up people who would redig the wells of the assemblies of God and the Pentecostal movement and Fresh Start Church has been in revival now for seven years, sustained revival. They are not going back. They are not de-intensifying. It's only increasing. That's only three places. That's only three among a whole list that the Lord not only gave me, but he's adding to regularly. And I call that the alarm clock or the testimony of burning fires. And I mentioned those people and I mentioned those places with great intentionality because I know them. I want you to check them out. I want you to research them, look them up, because you will see God moving in these places. And I believe He is only intensifying His move. So we say right now, Holy Spirit, help us to hear clearly the alarm clocks that are going off in the Spirit. Help us to actually receive the invitation that these alarms are giving us. It is an urgent hour. It's an urgent hour. We need to pray like it's urgent. We need to actually not just pray, but like, the, the church of old did, we need to be those who open the door for the move of God because Holy Spirit's hovering. He's brooding. His presence has been poured out for 2000 years since the day of Pentecost. He's just looking for a company of people. He's looking for an individual who say, Holy Spirit, I'm going to live, think and speak like I am living in the days of outpouring. You said it's time. You said ask for rain in the time of rain. So I'm going to ask for rain. And we do that even now, Lord. Thank you for what you're doing. And we ask you to increase it all the more in Jesus name. Amen. Amen.